Hello, my name is Madison Grassi, and my team and I decided to research Uber and take a deeper look into their company, culture, and values. Uber was founded in 2005 in San Francisco, California. It was originally called Uber Cab and was developed by Garrett Camp and Travis Kalanick. The idea of Uber came about after the boys had to pay $800 for, to hire a private driver one night and they wanted to completely revamp ride sharing and make it affordable and available to virtually everyone. Uber today is the largest rideshare company in the world and is available in over 900 metropolitan areas worldwide. With Uber being at the forefront of affordable transportation, one would think employee satisfaction would be very high up on Uber's priorities and success. After looking into it, my team and I can conclude that this is not the case and Uber has been involved in a laundry list of scandals and complaints of a toxic work environment. During Uber's early days, employees were expected to vow to Uber's unusual 14 core company culture values. These values included super pumpness, always be hustling, let builders build, mediocrity and toe stepping, principled confrontation, making bold bets, celebrate cities, Make magic, inside out, optimistic leadership, being yourself, own don't rent, champion's mindset, and obsession with the customer. This predominantly masculine set of core values is not only confusing but misleading as it resulted in numerous reports of discrimination and sexual harassment from Uber's employees. Using four keywords, Uber's toxic work environment, you will see pages upon pages of reports of unhappy Uber employees. On the forefront, we have Susan Fowler. She joined Uber in 2015. She was hired as a site reliability engineer. During her first week, her manager was texting her inappropriately and she felt uncomfortable, so she screenshotted the text messages and reported them to HR. HR then completely dismissed her. They said, that she kind of misinterpreted the text and they didn't feel comfortable punishing the manager because he was so high up and they didn't want to embarrass him and they had never received any reports like this of this type of misbehavior from him so they only felt comfortable giving him a warning. Susan was then given two options. She could either stay on the current team that she was on but was advised that she would more than likely receive um, poor performance reports from the manager because she reported them and that would be inevitable and there would be nothing that she could do about it. Or she could join a new team. So eventually she decided to join a new team and this is where she began making connections with the other women that worked at Uber. And surprisingly to her, she began hearing stories that were very similar to hers. And apparently that these women had been sexually harassed and mistreated by this person, and they had reported them to HR with no luck, just like Susan. Susan was outraged and wanted something to happen out of this, so she went back to HR and again was told that her report was the only one that was ever reported of him misbehaving, and still they didn't think that the text messages were enough to punish him. So nothing was really ever done about that. And eventually the manager did decide to leave the company, but it was completely unrelated to the incidents that were reported by the women. So now I'm gonna pass it on to Alex and he's going to talk to you about the importance of a healthy work environment and how detrimental a toxic work environment can be on employees. Thank you. Please. Thank you, Maddie. And uh, as you discussed, I'll be talking more about Uber's fight against paying workers not only a living wage, but uh, paying their drivers for services rendered. And it's a, it's a fight that's been going on since the beginning of the company. Uh, and as a company whose main source of income relies on the services of their drivers, uh, Uber has taken a very strong stance against paying fair wages to those drivers. Uh, instead of classifying them as employees, they're classified rather as contractors. 
and not and they're not given the same legal status as employees, the same benefits, or given any health care or the right to any health care um, in the eyes of the state. Um, and a reason for this, and put in the words of uh, workers' rights lawyer um, Nancy Jorg, is that hiring independent contractors instead of employees can save a company 35% in benefits and taxes. And that's going to be the only reason that they're doing this. Uh, and th this fight against the workers has been taken to court time and time again, first appearing uh, in court in 2010, Uber fought against a cease and desist order from the city of San Francisco for un, uh, operating unlicensed taxi cab service. Um, a lot of the questions around this service swirled from the city uh, about the legality and the status of their drivers, whether they're contractors or employees. Um, uh, three years later, uh, a lawsuit, a class action lawsuit was filed on behalf of 350,000 Uber drivers against Uber uh, in California and um, Massachusetts for the first time. And both states ruled on behalf of the drivers, uh, meaning this would be the first time um, that Uber drivers would be classified as employees in the United States. Um, and this begins a long laundry list of lawsuits against Uber for better workers' rights. These lawsuits extend overseas, um, as well as Uber has fought hard in the European courts in order to keep drivers classified as contractors. And they have lost those fights in companies like Norway, Belgium, UK, and France. Um, Uber isn't actually paying their drivers unless they are on a ride, meaning that Uber doesn't have to pay them for the majority of the driving around they do unless they're on call through the Uber app. And even then, uh, Uber is taking 60% or more depending on the tier of the ride, the length of the ride, the quality of the ride through the customer's either complaints or satisfaction you know, through reviews, um, and the tips. And so a lot of protesting has happened as Uber's prices increase, the amount of money that the, these workers get is still minimal and still shrinking in terms of, you know, in the wide grand scheme of things. Um, and this kind of refusal and reluctance uh, to pay their workers who, in Uber's case, earn the majority of Uber's profits uh, leads to deep rifts in intercultural work, interwork culture. <laughs> Uh, conflict seems to be, from a surface level, um, blue collar versus white collar as the top brass of, of the company, the executives are fighting against giving their blue collar workers rights as employees. Um, executives are waging war against their drivers in order to keep the profits and bonuses consolidated to the top of the company and uh, only given back to the same executives. Um, and not to the workers who earn the majority of the money for the company. Um, paying workers their fair share of wages would greatly relieve a lot of the, the, um, the deep rift in work culture between drivers and executives at Uber. And uh, in order for a company to move forward, you need to pay fair wages across the board or else a company is going to not function correctly at all. Um, and I'm going to pass it on to John, who's going to bring us the conclusion and talk about toxicity in the workplace. I want to thank you very much and goodbye. Given these examples, some would say Uber has a toxic work environment. What is a toxic work environment? By definition, it's narcissism, aggressive and offensive leadership, threatening behavior from employees and managers, and harassment, bullying, and ostracism. This type of work environment can lead to detrimental effects in workers' productivity, stress, and many other things. To combat this, HR and policymakers can develop and implement policies that will remove toxicity and make the environment more collaborative and conductive for employees. In order to fix the culture and create a healthy work environment, Uber should follow these steps. The first being receive input from employees on cultural guidelines.
This step is important because it'll allow for employees to give their feedback as these policies will directly affect them. The second step is to establish clear guidelines for desired corporate culture. And last, provide training for managers to know what is expected from employees behavior-wise and know how to address these situations. Following such plan can reap many benefits and some possible results include removing toxicity from the work environment. It'll show Uber is putting an emphasis on creating a healthy work environment and it'll allow workers to feel more comfortable and ultimately increase overall productiveness. Overall, it is clear Uber does not have the best history regarding workplace culture as shown in the previous examples. To prevent such situations and to prevent more workers from leaving the company, we recommend Uber follows this action plan. It'll create a better structure and will remove toxicity and allow for situations to be handled accordingly. Thank you.